Wow, you guys. So I just finished reading this incredible article written by Jason Scryer. I think that's how you say his name, Scryer. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. I'll put his name right here. He wrote this fantastic article for Kotaku in which he interviewed 19 people that were involved in the development of Bioware's Anthem. As you know, Anthem was the recent disaster released by Bioware, the company that created such lovable games as Dragon Age, Knights of the Old Republic, and of course Mass Effect. This game was so poorly received upon its release, it now has a rating of 55 on Metacritic. And when you hear about the process that went into creating this game, it's no wonder it was a disaster. The situations that this article describes were so relatable to me. Um, there's one part of the article in this quote. It says that one former Bioware developer told me they would frequently find a private room in the office, shut the door, and just cry. As someone who used to do that at my fir former job, my heart just goes out to you because I know I've been there working at a job that stressful. Wow, I just want to go through and talk about this article. Um, talk about the different challenges that this company went through and just the lack of direction as a result of the challenge of EA forcing them to use the Frostbite engine that just didn't work with that game. Um, different developers involved in the project coming and going so frequently. There was not one voice that stuck with the project to just lead it in a certain direction. I mean, they didn't know what the game was going to be fully until the last couple months of development. I mean, they didn't even know what the name of the game was until right before they announced the game. The game was originally going to be called Beyond and they changed it to Anthem because they couldn't get the copyright of that name. They, they couldn't purchase the rights to Beyond so they changed it to Anthem right before they announced the game. So the first major problem with this game is that it just lacked direction and that was simply because so many people came and left. They came and left because they were burnt out. They were stressed out. And if you look at the credits of this game, you will see in the credits developers that joined the project months before it was released. People came and went so frequently that I tried to make this list that I have right here of people that came and went and it's not even worth sharing because it's just so confusing. Basically, Casey Hudson, the developer, the main lead in this project, came and then he left and then he came back near the end and replaced Aaron Flynn and David Gator was going to write the story but no one liked the direction that he was going for so he left as well. And as a result, they lacked a voice. They lacked a leader coming in and saying, hey, this is what Anthem is. This is what we're going for. And this is what we need to do with this project. This is what the process of trying to create this game looked like. A group of developers are in a meeting. They're debating some creative decision like the mechanics of flying or the lore behind the Scar alien race. Some people disagree on the fundamentals and then rather than someone stepping up and making a decision about how to proceed, the meeting would end with no real verdict, leaving everyone in flux. That would just, ha that would just happen over and over. So basically people would argue but no one would step in and say, you know what, this is what we're gonna do and that's what we're gonna do and that's it. And they needed someone to come in and just say, okay, this is what this project is going to be. They didn't really know what the game was going to be until a few months before it was actually released. This is not a good sign. 
Another flaw that they face in development is that they had to create this game with an engine that just didn't work with the game. It wasn't suited for this game and you can just tell. So they used the Frostbite engine both to create Anthem and Andromeda and we know how Andromeda worked out. Andromeda was a nightmare. The Frostbite engine did not work well. It would have been way more well suited for the Unreal Engine, let's say. It's like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole and that's what working with the Frostbite engine was for these developers. So why did they use Frostbite engine you might ask? That's where the real villain of the story comes in in my opinion. So EA decided that all of their games across all boards with all companies should be made using the Frostbite engine. And that's simply because it saves them money if all of their companies use this engine. And I get that. I get the desire to save money. But what they should have learned, I wish, I guess they didn't have time to learn this, but they should have learned that with Andromeda, that you can't force a game company to create a game using an engine that doesn't suit the game. Another brilliant decision on EA's part is that they decided to focus most of their developers on FIFA. Again, this makes sense because FIFA games make EA a lot of money, but because they had so many developers working on FIFA, the staff for Anthem was short staff. They didn't have enough people working on this project, and that meant that the few people that were actually working on this game were overloaded, overwhelmed, with way too much work. The article goes into a lot of last minute decisions that the company had to make. They were going to completely take flying out of the game, for example, and then re-added it later on. And that's because it created so many challenges. Another thing that they changed is they had to use performance capture for the facial animations and I think that's great. It definitely added a lot of reality to the facial expressions, but unfortunately because facial capture was so expensive, they weren't able to reshoot scenes that they changed. Like I said, they changed a lot. They changed the story a lot. And so they would shoot scenes for things that wouldn't happen in the game and it made no narrative sense. So there are a lot of different details in this article that I can't mention just because there's so much. This article is really long and I encourage you to go and read it yourself. Give the author credit where credit's due. I mean, he did such a wonderful job. I think what you should take out of this is that, you know, journalism is really important and it's important to have video game journalists like explaining how difficult this job is. I admire the truth of this article. I admire how painful it was to read, um, but I think it was important. And I'm kind of disappointed in Bioware's response to this. You know, I get that they're not going to I guess tread on people or point fingers and that's what they said in their response. But they put one little detail in their response to this article that I could not disagree with more. People in this industry put so much passion and energy into making something fun. We don't see the value in tearing down one another or another's work. We don't believe articles that do that are making our industry and craft better. I don't think it was Jason's intent to tear anyone down or to make anyone look bad. I think what he just wanted to do was to tell the truth so that the video game industry can do better because they should do better. This kind of behavior should be exposed. Gaming developers should work in better conditions. So yes, I think it's really important and I just congratulate Jason for doing such an amazing job on exposing this. 
and I really like his response. He said that we believe in asking questions and publishing what we can find out. We hope that in the future, EA and Bioware will see the value of that process. Very well put. Um, this is just about getting the truth out. And I know that some people are going to make sensational comments on YouTube and Twitter and all social media, media just kind of like lunging onto this because people love a good controversy. But the spirit of this is not just to celebrate the controversy, it's really to expose. And I think that is so important. We need to know the truth. And I don't feel good because Bioware made mistakes. I don't feel good about that and I don't want that to happen and I want Bioware to do better. I'd love to hear your opinions on this guys. Um, I just feel really sad after reading this. I just can't believe what these developers went through. Like I said at the beginning, um, it really, this article really goes into how developers suffered, how their emotional well-being and mental health suffered. I mean a lot of people had to take mental health breaks and um, it just made me sad to read this but I'd like to hear what you think and um, please keep it respectful you know don't don't go hating on Bioware employees and spreading crap on their Twitter if you're gonna go hate anyone just hate hate EA I think but yes thank you for watching this video I should go by the way this is a bit of a more upbeat part of this video um, how awesome is this shirt that I found at the train station today? This is so great. I love English shirts in Taiwan. They're just so ridiculous. Um, yeah. Hugs! Hugs! If you feel bad right now, especially after reading that. <laughs> hugs! Hugs with my ridiculous shirt. <laughs>